In Zanzibar, which is a series of islands off the east coast of Africa, a group is using drones to map the effects of rising sea levels and global temperatures in an effort to combat local climate change. CBS News White House reporter Jacqueline Alemany recently visited the reason, and she joins us now to talk about her reporting there. Welcome back. Hey, guys. Thank you. So let's talk about Zanzibar. What makes it particularly prone to the effects that we're seeing from climate change. Yeah, so Zanzibar is particularly vulnerable to climate change because the entire economy is uh, dependent on the health and maintenance of its gorgeous and pristine ecosystem. Um, it's dependent on tourism, agriculture, seaweed, farming. Uh, so to combat this issue, that which is something that the government is thinking about on an everyday basis as opposed to our government, uh, which is still debating the science of climate change, uh, they piloted, the Zanzibar government piloted piloted the Zanzibar Mapping Initiative, um, a public-private partnership with the World Bank, um, which is the largest ever uh, small-scale drone project used to uh, take aerial images of the entire island. So um, right now they've mapped a 53-mile-long stretch of island, um, the island of Nguja, uh, Zanzibar's largest island. Um, and it's important to keep in mind that this is like a very cost effective measure for them. Um, they have been able to update their base map of the island since 2005 because it was so expensive. So that they literally, the surveyors in the government are going out and measuring uh, coastal erosion with a measuring tape. Wow. That's how they urban plan by hand. Wow. Um, so this is, uh, the drones are taking small, very high resolution pictures of every single square inch of the island, piecing that together to create a base map, um, which is so high res that you can see uh, changes to uh, seagrass, mangroves, um, important parts of the ecosystem that are being affected by climate change. So is the idea that they'll continue to do this so they can sort of see the progress or lack of or the changes that are occurring? Yeah, yeah, although the first step is first get for the them base, getting yeah. the base map right. out, which they haven't actually gotten that out yet. It's out in November. The World Bank hasn't really sold um, the entire government on the value of open data just yet, mm -hmm. but uh, they're planning on getting this first base map out in November. So, Jackie, one of the things that you wrote about in your piece, uh, which we found really startling is 2.9 percent of Africa is mapped at a local scale compared to 87 percent of Europe. Also, we talk about challenges such as the national uh, average of population growth in Tanzania, for example, is growing so rapidly they're not able to necessarily keep up with the changes that have come about, frankly, because of medical technology, medical achievement, um, and advances in medicine to the continent. What are some of the other challenges that they're facing? Yeah, so that's why this project is so interesting um, because it is really uh, leapfrogging that digital divide um, at a really cost effective rate. Uh, so, the other problems that they're facing, though, is like the inability to even do something as simple as urban plan to plot out street lamps, which an urban planner in America would be able to do very easily. Um, and because of that, uh, you know, there are entire villages that have cropped up in roadways. So, as you've seen with Puerto Rico, for example, and other island nations, other small Small states and islands, would have been which have been completely decimated by natural disasters. Um, Zanzibar doesn't necessarily have the capacity and the policy making um, information to climate proof their island against those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, they also have seen meteorologic changes, which has increased rainfall. So there has been massive flooding. Um, and because these people are building up in flood zones in a very disorganized way, uh, the government isn't able to protect people against massive flooding. I talked with a family in Sablani, a, a flooded village. It's been flooded every other year. Everyone always has to evacuate consistently, but they keep going back. So hopefully with this drone um, imagery, and this information, they'll be able to just move the village somewhere else. There are, you know, Zanzibar is an urban island, um, which means it's super densely populated, 1.3 million people. If they don't plan uh, intelligently, there will be problems. It will be, um, as someone called it, just an, a settlement. Um, but they're, you know, they can be more intelligent about the way that they are building up the island. You mentioned that there's some pushback from certain members of the government in Zanzibar. To me, this seems like a no-brainer. Right, no it's cheap. They're particularly dependent on or impacted by climate change. Particularly, what's the pushback? Yes. Yeah, so what's lingering with the government is has been described to me as the Soviet-esque bureaucracy, mm. um, which is a resistance to share 
sharing information in general. Um, there is this law called the National Statistics Law, which was passed by the Tanzanian government, applies to Zanzibar uh, in 2015, which says that every single statistic published needs to be approved by the Tanzanian government. Otherwise, it's not an it's official, official statistic. And oh, they that won't can take forever, it. right? Yeah. So there is, you, you can feel that level of opaqueness on the island still. But there are people I spoke with, like Abu Jumbe, the Ministry of the Environment, who is such a loud proponent of this um, that I, I do believe that this information will go somewhere. It was successfully implemented in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania's um, capital, which is, I think, the largest growing city in Africa. Right. They cre created a whole open source system based after... Um, uh, based after like a similar project, which the Zanzibar Mapping Initiative was actually modeled after. So they do have a track record of success. Mm. Let's talk about some of the folks that you met uh, throughout your reporting there. Yeah. Uh, we saw those images, which are uh, just beautiful images of showing women. Um, in one particular uh, example, this person named Khadija yeah. holding up the this, drone. This right here yeah, is there, great. Because it's sort of like picture. two worlds yeah. collide. Right. You, know? you even called yeah. her, the, 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 she's cutting the figure of a modern Zanzibari superwoman, caping mm -hmm. off, flapping against the overcast horizon as she like launches these drones. And you say in your piece, yeah. the drones became famous. Yeah, and she became famous. <laughs> uh, she calls herself the queen of the drone, and that's what other people are calling her too now. But um, she's actually traveled all over the world. Uh, she went to North Carolina, she's been to Uganda, uh, training other people on this project on how to use drones for humanitarian um, and various um, applications. Mm -hmm. But Zanzibar is um, a strange place because like to the eye, it seems very Western. Um, but then you it's a huge like tourist. I mean, it's so many. I, I've only right. I've never been as a reporter. I've only been as a tourist essentially, because right. that's what most people who are from the West visit Zanzibar because it's beautiful beaches, a lot of culture. Exactly. But culturally, a woman taking on this role is pretty rare. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I spoke with a, a, a PhD, a woman who has a PhD. She said she's one of three women on the island who has a PhD. Wow. Um, so Khadija is one of the, I think, lucky women um, who has been really empowered by her family and her husband. She just got it married. Sounds like it. And then in, in the piece you describe, she says that her she married someone who permits her to do whatever she wants exactly. as opposed to asking permission to do what she wants. Well, and that's what you hear a lot from, that's what I heard a lot from um, the women on my time in the island, that uh, there's a lot of permission asking. So she has had the permission to be empowered, to be a sort of become a certified drone pilot. And it's opened up a lot of doors for her. Uh, she's now doing private consulting jobs. Um, when I said bye to her, she was, we said bye at the airport, she was actually on her way to Mwanza, a different area of Tanzania, to map a gold mine. Hmm. Um, but there are some other other women who weren't who were part of the project who uh, weren't able to take advantage of this in the way Khadija was able to um, and who were taunted by their fellow villagers for taking on a, a men's role mm. why yeah. did they choose women as opposed uh, to men well Actually, it, it, there are men and women, but the women ended up being the better drone pilots. They told me <laughs> that that was because they are more delicate with the drone, and it requires like a, a woman's touch. Hmm. Yeah, right. buy that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess. I guess. Finally, for people who may read your reporting and see this piece and wonder themselves, you know, how are the lessons learned from this project in Zanzibar able to be extrapolated across the continent, which has significant problems. And for a lot of governments, they will say, look, uh, climate change, I get it, but I've got to feed people. I've mm -hmm. got to ensure right. that uh, we eradicate disease. And is there is there a way to and take... That's been part of the ongoing discussion, right? right? While the developed world uh, focus has, on has you know, created all this great stuff, which includes sort of polluting the environment, polluting right. the world, the recipients of that, the, the fallout, you know, lands on the developing world. Right. And then we say to them, you know, well, you can't do any of the stuff that we did because it causes pollution. And right. they're like, and hey. They're saying, Wait, what? Uh, yeah, it was good for you, but it was not good for us. Yeah, and I, I felt so much of that resentment yeah. while I was there. Uh, I know tons of people reading this article are probably like, why should I care about this? But the world was watching when the U.S. was pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord. Abu Jumbe told me that he was glued to the television said during our whole election with a sense of despair wow. um, uh, that the U.S. was final was you know they'd final Obama had finally established the U.S. as like a leader in the fight against climate change and now Trump was undoing all of that. Mm -hmm. um, it and makes it hard for them right to see the, the United States setting the example right. when it comes to 
pollution, when it comes to recycling, and then all of a sudden saying, you know what, we're going to remove ourselves from the world stage. So what incentive does it lead these other leaders of these African countries to do the same? Exactly. And uh, Jumbe actually traveled to the U.S. for the U.N. Oceans uh, Conference right after they, after the pres uh, President Trump withdrew from the Paris Climate Accord. Um, and he said that the entire room in the conference was tense when uh, the U.S. representative got up there and said that they were committed to uh, fighting against warming ocean waters and rising sea levels, but they were withdrawing from the Paris Climate Accord. But I think what the drone mapping initiative has successfully accomplished is this sense of autonomy, um, not only for people like Khadija, but that like Zanzibar can do this on their own, that um, African nations don't have to necessarily be dependent on international financing and the help of the United States. Uh, I had a, a philosopher, um, an Islamic philosopher, who tries to apply Islamic law to the principles of climate change to fighting climate change and uh, he told me that if anything Trump was a benefit because he has awoken uh, Africa to um, come together and to fight against the effects of climate change themselves. That's interesting. It is yeah. very, that's, a, that's actually a good message because yeah. ultimately one of the things that you, you know very well from your time there is that they want to do things themselves. They don't want to be the recipient of handouts. They, right. I've always been intrigued with the fact that um, generally countries in Africa are not NGO havens. There are some that are there, but they prefer to do things because it does smack of colonialism, mm, of white right. savior, which you probably exactly. encountered. And that's why this was so interesting, right? It was a public-private partnership with the World Bank, the State University of Zanzibar, and the Zanzibar government. So everyone doing, everyone who became a certified drone pilot was a Zanzibari geospatial student. Uh, which was, is also uh, one of a kind. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Jackie, thank you so much for your reporting. That was really great. Thank you so much for having me.